Hi guys, welcome back to the Blunt Blonde Mama podcast. I am your host, Shanitria, and I am bringing back the Canon Mom Roundtable. You guys loved it so much. I've had so many great moms come through and share information and their wisdom. And we just really talk about things that moms want to know and that moms want to talk about. Um, so I have three special guests here and I am so excited. Two of the guests, well, actually all three, this is like y'all's second time coming on. And um, I haven't had two of these ladies on the podcast in a really, really long time, but I'm excited that y'all are back. And so this is going to be a really good combo, you guys. Um, get your weed, get ready to touch with us. It's probably going to get very, very smoky in this room. Um, so just enjoy uh, the visuals while everything's clear. So welcome back to the Can of Mom <laughs> Roundtable. I'm going to start this way and let y'all introduce yourselves to the folks. And um, yay, I'm excited. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm Erica, um, one half of Good Moms, Bad Choices podcast, founder of the Good Vibe Retreat, author, retreat leader, uh, wellness advocate, mother, and badass woman. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hello, guys. This is Mila. I am the other half of the Good Moms, Bad Choices podcast. Uh Hmm. I am also a retreat leader and the founder of Good Vibe Retreat. I'm an author. I'm a sexologist. I'm a tantric practitioner. I'm a blunt blowing mama. Not the blunt blowing mama, but a blunt blowing mama. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm Angie Stalker. I am an entrepreneur. I have a brand called Highly Crafty. I'm also a technically internationally touring comedian. Okay, I see you, Dublin. <laughs> um, and I am a mother. I'm also a bud tender as well. Yes. Okay. So I'm so happy to have you guys all here and to get into this conversation about motherhood and weed. As you guys know, being a mom is ghetto. Being an adult is like trailer trash. Like I hate all of the above. Like, <laughs> Talk about I, it. It's really like trash, but you know what makes it better? This. Weed makes it all bearable. Weed makes the wild ass motherhood moments not seem so fucking wild. Like, like I can't believe I'm cleaning urine off the floor right now. <laughs> you know, at last I am a mother and we're here. Um, So I want to ask you guys like how do you deal just just get right into it like how do you guys deal with like judgment um and shame like really quickly how old are y'all's kids and then like how do you deal with judgment and shaming of like when people find out that you're a mom that smokes weed and all you guys are like pretty open mm -hmm. about your cannabis consumption granted y'all are cali mom so you can be open but just because you live in california doesn't mean you're open about your cannabis consumption, but how do you guys deal with haters or judgment or shame? And how old are your kiddos? Um, my daughter is nine and, um, hmm. Ignore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, honestly, I think, I think that I have been really lucky because I've, I've grown up and been raised in California. So weed culture is a little bit different. It's a little bit more flexible there. Although smoking and being a mother is still kind of universal. There's a universal layer of shame around it, no matter where you um, reside. Um, but I think, I think surrounding myself with other moms who um, ingest the flower, partake in the experience of, um, plant medicine has been really grounding for me. And that really started with my friendship with Jamila. And um, she was my first real can of mom now that I'm thinking about it. Um, and so I think having other women around me that are going through that ex same experience as being mothers in, in smoking just feels felt validating and has felt, va felt validating. And also... I think just really asking, ha being prepared to answer questions, you know, so you like, cause people will be like, well, how do you talk to your kids about cannabis? Or like, does your, does your mom, does your parents know, not parents, do your kids know you smoke weed? Um, I think just having um, answers to the questions has felt really good instead of not knowing how to answer. Cause I think that also kind of feeds into the anxiety and the shame. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those two ways have really helped me. Haters, hum. Um, I guess I kind of disregard. I'm in the same boat as Erica. We have like a very tight crew. All of a lot of our people like know us personally. I think I'm just now getting to the age where like the kid is asking for play dates that are not my the kids of immediate friends. And now then I'm realizing like, oh shit, this is a thing. Like, do I need to hide the blunts in my house? Because at my house, my daughter knows like 
she's not she's not in her, like it's not even something she reaches for like yeah, she's she not knows it's off limits. she knows it's off limits yeah. she's not like i'm not even thinking about it because right. she's that like integrated into our life like right. she's she's known about the flower since you know forever so it's not even like a tempting thing i do realize like i'd notice um like when i pick her up from school if i'm wearing certain merch of ours that has a huge weed plant on it or you know like good moms love flower you know i'm like because she goes to the predominantly white school, I'm conscious of a lot of things, I think. And that is one of them. And I think that's like probably the only I, I've become more comfortable as I've gotten more comfortable in this space. And that, yeah, it is pretty public. She doesn't go to school like shouting it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of those moms don't listen to my podcast. But it's not like you can't find the shit somewhere like in a bookstore or on the mm-hmm. fucking podcast page. But I, I, I find that that my hangups are kind of around like, I guess, people who I'm not super close with and mostly regarding not putting her in a compromising situation that someone's going to make a comment or make her feel uncomfortable and I'm not there to defend her, you know, or curse, curse a bitch out. That's something to think about. Yeah. That I think that's like the next level of the parenting that we're all going to get to is when our kids get to that age where kids will be able to Google what their parents do and be like, Oh, but your mom smokes weed for a living, you know, or something like how will they be able to combat that if we're not there to like kick that kid's ass in that moment? Um, (laughs) Um, Because I will tell a kid to fuck off if they're fucking with my kid. But I mean, that's, I don't know. Anyways, (laughs) you go ahead. (laughs) That's another, like, that's the next frontier we're probably going to be heading to. It's like dealing with that. Like, yeah. That's why I think it's important to educate them. Like, I'm educated. That's kind of how I combat any hate or, I don't really get much hate, honestly. Maybe it's just because I'm out here throwing education around like hey see this why that's why Mm -hmm. boom oh you you wonder why it helps that here science you know Mm -hmm. like so by educating myself i can educate my kids so then when they do if they get any comments or anything then they kind of know how to react or how to you know combat it just be able to say like well, actually, my mom uses cannabis. She gets brand, you know, like whatever it is, I'm going to be honest and I'm going to be open. Like they know I work at a dispensary. They know that I sell cannabis. They know all of this mm-hmm. and they know the symbols on the thing, you know, so the it's labels, like, yeah. they're very well versed. And so I think that that helps combat any sort of negativity that comes mm-hmm. your way is if you're educated and you can stand behind what you're saying, then that just shuts down anyone's argument because I mean scientifically speaking <laughs> yeah. you are right yeah. you know for what you're doing so we have to be open and honest with our kids like my sister got me a waffle iron and the waffle iron makes waffles that have the wheat leaf imprinted on the waffle oh, that's so cute and so for as long as that. my kids can I know, remember, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for as long as my kids can remember when we have waffles for breakfast there's a wheat leaf on it and that's how normal it is in my house and I feel like it's really important to make it that normal as waffles at breakfast and if it becomes that normal then your kids are just like well you know this is okay and my mom uses medicine and she has anxiety sometimes and sometimes she has depression and it helps with that and I think there's an openness that and you guys we're all open as moms we tell our kids a lot of stuff that we probably shouldn't tell them but like or try (laughs) to break down to them and so that helps them to better navigate that stuff um I want to ask you guys um like how are you consuming now versus like when your kids were little, when they were babies? Like, what does your consumption look like now versus when they were babies? Because when my kids were little, I was just struggling to get in where I could fit it in. Like, okay, nap time, let me go like run and smoke one really quick. Or like there will be days where I'll be so frustrated because this baby has been on my boob all day and I haven't had a time to like smoke any weed or anything like that. So like, but now that they're older, like, I have all this free time and I'm just like, shit, like, should I go like take a bath and like have some shrooms and like (laughs) smoke a joint inside the tub? Like I'm able to consume so much more um, and able to like really enjoy it and not rush my sessions. And that feels really, really good. Like, and it almost makes me want to be like, I don't want to have any more fucking kids because I don't want to go back to like having to like rush through my sessions. Like I just want to like, smoke whenever the fuck I want to and I kind of can and they're in school all day and I just feel like oh (laughs) Oh my god do you want more kids I mean I do want one more I'm not gonna really I do I do I want one more kid um and I don't know if it's coming out of me but like (laughs) I would love to like 
do one more pregnancy because now that I know everything I know mm. about using weed during pregnancy, how it can help me. Um, like I deal with extreme fatigue in that first trimester, like so, 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 so bad. Mm. Um, but sativas keep me awake. And so if I'm able to do that in first trimester, then I don't really have that issue anymore. Or like, you know, using CBD bath bombs throughout my whole pregnancy is something else that I would do. I would microdose mushrooms if I, you know, another pregnancy, if I got a chance to do that, because I feel like there's so many ways to make pregnancy the best time ever, mm. especially in 2024. And then the different forms that all of these plants are offered in now that makes pregnancy like way more enjoyable than it was like, you know, nine years ago when I was pregnant with my firstborn kid. Like, so I would absolutely do it again. And I know I would enjoy every second of it. Um, am I, but like also, uh, there's so much more that comes of having a baby than just being <laughs> pregnant. So, you know, I got to think about that. But I do want another kid. You guys want other more kids? If I could, <laughs> if I could be pregnant and then somehow fast forward to like a three year old. <laughs> Boom, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> let's but go. As the whole natural process. No, no, no. I would You're like, done. Yeah. yeah I mean, I would like to like, I'm not. I closed off like I'll foster or maybe adopt uh, some older kids down a little bit later you know something like that cause I like the idea of you know being like oh I'm sorry like, you know like I'll be, be your mama I'll be your mama come on <laughs> I'll be your mama I'll be your mama that's <laughs> kind of you I have don't have any of that feeling <laughs> that is not a bone in my body that wants to do that um I okay wait I'm gonna answer your first question yeah. which was around smoking and has it changed um you know when I got pregnant I really was turned off by the smell of smoke my child's father really loved to smoke backwards oh, and yeah. we had we're living in our house and so like he would go smoke in the garage but the garage was connected to the living room so the smoke would just always come through and I just remember feeling so nauseous so turned off by it, mm. so turned off by his breath. Oh, he didn't mm. gargle afterwards. Yeah. Or and so I actually started to really hate weed. Like what? I was like grossed out by it. Sometimes I would be like, and then I also fell into the trap of, you know, what you're what you can and can't do when you're pregnant. Mm. I was the first I was the first of my friends to have a to get pregnant. Um, I come from a family that's very about go to the doctor. You know, if anything's wrong, go to the doctor, go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the doctor and the doctor was like, you can't do this, this, this. Like, you know, they, they yeah. run you down this whole list of shit. And of course, you can't smoke cannabis. Can't smoke cannabis. Um, so I was really I just wanted a healthy baby. So paired with the fact that I just didn't like the smell on top of I was subscribing to all these things. I was just like turned off by weed. Mm -hmm. Then when I had my daughter. Um, I had felt like ashamed. I felt shame around, I wanted to smoke, but like, I felt like I couldn't do that anymore. Um, especially cause I was breastfeeding and even after I was breastfeeding, cause that didn't even last very long. I still felt weird about it. Really? Um, I smoked, but nowhere near how heavy I was smoking before. Like I was a heavy smoker. Um, and so I thought like maybe now, like I, I have to grow up. These are things that we don't do anymore as Is much as we used to. Is that what we're supposed to do? We're not supposed to smoke no, the marijuana I, when you come I mean, life? obviously, Elizabeth, I'm smoking right now <laughs> and I'm about to go get my daughter after this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just really, uh, I didn't prioritize, I wasn't prioritizing that anymore, but I was struggling. Mm. So like cannabis probably would have helped me more, but I didn't. And then I would smoke here and there, trying to squeeze in smoking here and there when I felt like I, it was appropriate. Mm -hmm. Um, and then eventually when I met Jamila, I think the first time, yeah, the first time we hung out, we did smoke. How old was your daughter around that time? Five Three. months. Oh yeah. That was early on. Um, and so you went like your entire pregnancy, no weed. I maybe smoked one time. Wow. And you're breastfeeding, no weed. And then, like oh. shortly after that, I think right before I started hanging out with Jamila, I started smoking a little bit more. Yeah. And then she, and then she came over, and I was like, "Do you want to smoke?" And she was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Okay." Because <laughs> she's, I'm like, "Oh, she's his mom, and she smokes." And she was so casual with it, and like, I think our friendship really gave me permission to be mm -hmm. like, "Oh, I can smoke." Oh yeah, let me let me smoke. Mm -hmm. So then, as motherhood, as my daughter, you know that that fast forward to like my our daughters being around three is when we started the podcast. Mm -hmm. So. Obviously, but then that time period, I started smoking more because my life was falling to shambles. <laughs> <laughs> and so you smoke weed during those times, as you do. <laughs> I did. Um, 
But I don't know. Like, I think, yes, I've, as you, when you have a new child, when you have a new kid, you're new in parenting, it's trying to find times to smoke feels a lot more challenging. Now my daughter's nine. And I mean, I smoke whenever I want, but yeah. I feel like even before that, I was kind of smoking whenever I want. My daughter knows I smoke. I smoke in front of my daughter. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like, she, and you know, she, all, when I'm stepping outside, she knows like I'm going outside to smoke. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think, yes, I have more time to partake, but I feel like I've have had a pretty healthy balance between smoking and motherhood for a mm-hmm. while now mm-hmm. and plant medicine and even, and, and speaking to, you know, the use of plant medicine in pregnancy. There's so there's so many other plants even outside of cannabis so that can make your pregnancy smooth. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just cannabis. Cause I think a lot of people get caught up in like moms who smoke cannabis and plant. Mm-hmm. It's there's it's this is plant medicine and so is mm-hmm. what any other thing that Lavender you might take. Yeah. And chamomile and Damiana Damiana and mm-hmm. there's so many mullen and yeah. like there's so many. Right. Do you wanna and then as far as having more children um (laughs) yes i would have another child um you would mm -hmm. this would be a good mom's baby (laughs) yeah we need a pregnancy pregnancy pack yeah oh you guys are gonna do the pregnancy packs i love it um (laughs) but yeah i I, I want i want that because i have i'm so much more knowledgeable now that i want to have that experience with all this knowledge that i have now Mm -hmm. like the I was so fearful when I was pregnant the first time. I'm like, I'm excited to have an experience where I feel really empowered and I feel really excited. And also hopefully just a whole different version of partnership. (laughs) Listen, when we know Um, better, we do better. Yeah. Amen. (laughs) So, yeah. So, um, will there be a a little baby for you in Orlando? Yeah, we're going to have a baby. Ah, what? Uh, Wait, is it happening right now? No. (laughs) <laughs> no, I actually uh, I'm a copper copper IUD up right now. Oh, I know that's because right. I'm highly fertile and I don't I Me need too. to plan. Yeah. Even though I don't know if there's ever a good time for that. Um, well, it's when she gets pregnant, so we can have a fucking a good mom's baby. <laughs> um, I, I I smoked during my pregnancy. Um, <clears throat> I didn't feel a lot of shame around it. I didn't tell a lot of people. I think like I, I got judgment once I hit the bong and one of my baby daddy's friends like looked at me crazy and I kind of was just like, who the fuck are you looking How at? How far along were you? I was showing. Oh, go <laughs> off. I was definitely showing. Like it wasn't no fuck secret, but yeah. I was also like, we were all young and I was, I was like, suck my dick. Um, <laughs> suck my belly. <laughs> suck my belly. Like, <laughs> um, I... I don't know. Innately, I didn't feel like I was doing anything harmful or wrong. And I think I kind of smoked in front of my family and no one really like jumped down my throat, including my grandmother. Mm -hmm. So I was like, must be all right. (laughs) Um, And I didn't go crazy. I wasn't like sitting in the house smoking back to back blunts. And then this other girl told me her doctor told her that smoking a blunt in California is not bad because our smog is worse than smoking in one blunt a day. (laughs) And I was like, that's that what he said. Actually I rational. was like, your doctor said that? Was like, <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> um, but I, but, I, uh, but hindsight, I didn't, I was really close with my doctor. She was pretty young and I didn't tell her that I was smoking weed. I just kept it to myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I smoked weed while I was breastfeeding. Mm-hmm. So I, I had a pretty introduction to like a, a parent teaching their child about the flower early. I mm-hmm. saw it in Atlanta. I had a bunch of hippie friends in the West End mm-hmm. and they were growing weed and they gave like one of their five-year-old and like look at daddy's flower and then like that that visual stayed in my mind i was like 21 i had no i had no sight of kids but i was like oh that's what i that's what i want to do when i do have kids Mm -hmm. and so i've kind of like um i've kind of like flowed i haven't really like felt a lot of judgment maybe because i'm in la um but i i didn't drink while i was pregnant so that was just like my one thing Mm -hmm. and if i got pregnant again i would i would consume but you know i mentioned it to orlando and he was like kind of like judgy and i was like about you consuming cannabis yeah and i was like even though you consume now yeah and i consume with i guess you guys gotta have that talk well i kind of i kind of touched on it because i was kind of surprised by his current conservatism conservatism (laughs) (laughs) i was like what i was like i've never heard of this word (laughs) (laughs) current current servitism (laughs) i was breaking it down to make sure i said it correctly and i'm I'm not even sure it's a word you got it i was like he's gonna serve you (laughs) reading books okay (laughs) she's got big words coming conservatism i almost wore my glasses i'm actually so this is 
is, it's good that you bring that up because I often bring up to moms and like new couples or newlyweds. I'm like, hey, if you guys are thinking about having a baby and y'all be smoking weed together, don't just assume that because they're okay with you smoking weed and you're not pregnant, that they're going to be okay with you smoking weed when you are pregnant with their baby. Their, their baby. baby. Yeah. Specifically so, their That's what baby. it is. Yeah. It's like, it's, well, you know what it is? I think it's because men don't feel, they, they don't, they don't have control. So this is, <laughs> yes. it's like the one place yeah. in life where like they can't <laughs> do it. Yeah. Yes. And so they're like, wait, I can't control this? Like, hold on. And then then the problems start to come in. And so then it's like you're battling with this person while you're just trying to take care of yourself during pregnancy. It's not ideal. So I always say, like, have that conversation before you let them nut in you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, no, <laughs> it could be it could be a big deal. And you know yeah. what? I realize now my baby daddy then didn't like he supported me. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have to like fight about that. Yeah. Um, and same thing with like home birth and like hospital birth. Like you don't know until you're like someone's like, you already have my baby at the house. I'm like, yes, I am. Like, you, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Not at the house. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it is. But it's, yeah. uh, and so you have to have those conversations. So have you guys had that conversation? You know what? We touched on it lightly and I was like immediately got irritated. Like mm. who the fuck are you talking to? And I don't know if you ever picked it back up. And that's what I'm going to go in the house like, hey, guess what, Orlando? We never talk. <laughs> we need to uh, talk about this again. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah and i and i you know what part of me felt judged because of my age wait what well because I, I i'm gonna be older i'm gonna be like i was 27 when i was pregnant yeah. i'm 30 i'll be 36 this year that's or maybe not, that's not old no it's not old but we live in a society where after 35 it's geriatric yeah, pregnancy, p- pregnancy. Yeah. i know more i'm black you know what i mean like even i'm thinking like so hey, you need to be smoking weed that's what i'm saying if anything i need to shit more yeah okay. so he should definitely yeah. be like let me roll it up for you baby like, <laughs> right you now keep that same energy he rolls all my blends now i haven't rolled a blend in so long so i'm like you better keep the same he energy. better keep that same energy he should yeah. you guys gotta talk about it though yeah. I I really uh, appreciate that uh, that though because I would never have thought to ask a partner that yeah. before, and it's really? something, and it's like, oh. and it's something like you, yeah, it's an assumption that's yeah. easy to make, especially if you partake in something together. Together, yeah. That this continues, and then you start to see people's hangups around programming. Uh, yeah, yeah, hangups, programming, and yes. it's also I, it could be programming, but it's also preference. Some people have just genuine belief systems, not and not necessarily maybe around just smoking cannabis but just in general mm. these questions that we forget to ask yeah and because we just assume yeah you know and we should not be assuming when it comes to people that we're trying to have babies with no. the people that we're trying to marry like we need to know if you if weed is so important in your life you need to make sure that this person you're about to make a baby with really gets that like i really nail it home and i'm just like look and before we had our second kid i told jared i was like well, I asked him slash told. I was like, you know, you cool with me smoking weed with like our next pregnancy? Like if I have another kid? And he was like, yeah, sure. He was like, I think it'll help you a lot. And I was like, like bitch, roll that <laughs> He was like, please, what Lord. You trying you are not like, like, you are not high. Smoke pregnant. more weed. Let me For just... the love of God. And he yeah. was literally that guy. Like he would go to the dispensary and pick up whatever I needed. And he was very supportive in that regard. And he never at one point was like, not with my <laughs> baby in your belly. Like he was was like girl would you be willing if he said or would you be willing if Orlando said I don't mind if you smoke but just can you not smoke during the pregnancy I, like, I, you can smoke months? afterwards I, I consider that like because I think that's oh. that's what comes up for me you know I think moms ha- there's this thing right you oh. become a, you become a mom mm. and you're supposed to sacrifice yeah. what kind of mom are you if you can't go 10 months or 2 years like is it really that serious it but- is <laughs> <laughs> for, it right? is but then it puts you in this weird, awkward position to have to make that decision. And like, if I say it is, am I fucked up? You no, know? Like, you're not. See, that's the problem, I think, with the like whole system is that because we can't study and really research yeah. the benefits then it's all just like you're just you're just a bad mom you're just you're a you DNF stain and it's like or maybe my CB1 receptors and my CB2 receptors would be better served by me you know what i mean like there's a whole conversation to be had but you can't really have it because you don't have this science but the only reason you don't have the science you know like because you gotta, gotta go look, look right? you gotta yeah. look and it's just like you know when it comes down to it i always because women go through this all the time they'll hit me up and they'll be like shnitria i'm pregnant my baby's father does not support me he wants me to stop smoking weed he won't let me i get hung up on the word let when i see a woman and you're pregnant and you say my husband won't let me yeah. smoke weed i'm like 
well, he better let you out that door when you leave because what the fuck? Like, no, like if you're in pain, if you're saying I have anxiety, if you're saying that, like, I feel like a bitch every day and I need to calm the fuck down and this is the only thing that's helping me, you have pain, you're dealing with whatever comes with pregnancy, acid reflux, whatever, like, and weed is going to help you, then like... Why would your partner not want you to be well? Exactly. Why would they why would they want you to suffer? Well, I think even the bigger thing is is like the because I'm, I'm hung up on the on word the let. let. Right. But I'm and I'm thinking about like how much in your relationship, how much of your relationship is you is under your own terms of what you want and do outside of just weed in general. Mm-hmm. Like the like let like you haven't even had conversation around mm-hmm. this. Like or else you probably wouldn't have gone this far. And like, just thinking about relationships in general, like how many conversations are not had and they probably wouldn't have gone this far had we known to even ask those questions. But it's, I mean, I don't know. I feel like a little bit on the fence about it. I'm gonna be honest. About talking about it? No, about like, if your your partner said, if my partner wanted me to like, if, I don't know. like If they said they don't want you to. Do you know what it is? I think I love weed, but... You I take breaks partner. anyway. Mm-hmm. So you know what I mean? And so if that, I don't know. I don't know. I would. So you would stop smoking. We would weed. have to find, maybe not smoking, but like we could find a balance. We can yeah. find a compromise. I'm That's not the compromise. Like maybe like it's like, yeah. okay, I will you. smoke. Yeah. Maybe I will smoke the first three, the first three months of this, of the baby. Once we get, make sure everything's cool. Mm-hmm. Then like we can talk about what my, what my uh, consumption looks like then. Like exactly. I would be flexible in that. Okay. You know, I, I think like there's. Oh, thanks for that input. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. That something makes sense. Like, no, because like, the let, edibles, the let would the let would yeah. bother me too, and yeah. then I would do it. Yeah, you could, you could have. <laughs> <laughs> you're lit. I mean, you could have like you can make edibles yourself. You can, I mean, you're in LA. You can go to the dispensary and buy edibles. You can have drinks, so you can drink it. You can rub it on your skin. You can soak in the bath with it. You can still use a CBD lube on your pussy before you're about to fuck. Like you can still use it in so many ways. Yeah. That's not smoking. And if they're just like hung up on it, period then that's a totally different thing. I think a lot of times people are just like, I don't want you to smoke, babe. Like, I just don't. And you know, it's like, okay, cool. Maybe I get this dry herb vaporizer. So now I'm not combusting. <laughs> right. And it's vapor. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm all about the work around. I'm all about the compromise. Like, yeah. you got to meet me on this because the answer is not no for me. I think that that's people need at. to feel more, like, because this is what I was saying about, like, feeling empowered to answer the questions. Like, if you have answers to why you want to smoke during your pregnancy, then you should, then you need to be able, you need to be able to share those with the people because yeah. that's why you feel insecure about it. That's why you feel like he has control over whether you can or not because you don't even feel like you have real like knowledge and empowerment mm. in as to why as to why you know yeah. and so why it like, makes me feel a certain way. Okay. Yeah. Like if 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 it's if it is important to you, then understand why it is. Yeah. Understand the benefits of cannabis. Understand some whatever the studies because there are studies. They're not yes. there's you know and like understand the benefits so that you can be like this is why Mm -hmm. and i've done the research and boom because it's really like i guess i was trying to think of while you guys were talking like what it would be like as a woman of us asking our partner to not do something for a time period like (laughs) well they would never know because they never have to give up every drug (laughs) and every fucking recreational thing but some women who said like my man stopped smoking weed while i was pregnant because i wasn't smoking that's my request solidarity yeah that's kind of my request like you can't be getting fucked up like we're in this together that that was my request like my we on a we are, we are we are pregnant. We're in it. So we're pregnant. We are not going to the party and you're getting fucked up and I'm sitting here sober taking your fucking ass home. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like like what are you gonna do if I say no? Like what? Like what would that the part. husband do? Is she, down the stairs? Is, she is he gonna <laughs> is he gonna leave you? Is he gonna like call social? Like what is the what is the alternative? The, the baby's still gonna be inside here for yeah. the next. That's what I'm really like, curious about. Well, what is the alternative? The, no oh, well, this, this, this is a, this is an important conversation, I believe, because I think this is where shit gets fucked up, and yeah. this is where true colors start to show, and those conversations that you didn't previously have can start to come up. Come beca- bite you in the ass because it's you know for men, a lot of men, there's a lot of pride, there's a lot of ego, and they are under the impression that there's ownership and agency over their partner's body and yes. especially over that seed they bedded Ooh, in you they're know baby. <laughs> they're they're whatever you know so i think that for some women if you're not fucking with the right loving supportive wanting to be educated man uh, niggas can get real nasty in this how bitch. do you figure out if he is that kind of man the kind of man that's loving and supportive and like willing to communicate like you have a great husband of many years yeah. like come on Johnson how, how are we gonna find a Justin <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that's the thing for me he's the first person that I like dated he was my first boyfriend mm-hmm. my first you know like so for me it was just like 
I'm not, I'm like, he treated me how I thought you should be treated. He set the standard, right? Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was just like, oh shit, this is what it's like. Like, it's not saying you're going to take me out to the movies and then three hours later after I've been sitting waiting on you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's saying you're going to be here and you're here, saying we're going to do this and we do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, just consistently doing consistency. that. Consistency. And for me, it was like, oh, oh, okay, you're like really it about make me. it easy to have you know? those conversations, those hard exactly. conversations. And so it does, there's no, it's, everything is easy to, not easy to talk about, but everything is up for discussion or open to talk about or open to pointing out. And especially just because he's white. So it's like... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of shit he don't know. I was expecting you to say that. You guys don't know that. I was like, I thought you were going to say something else, girl. I just died. No, he's fine. There's a lot of stuff that has to get explained. I mean, there's lovely white men. But it's nice that he is. You you just sold the white man to so many black women right now. (laughs) You just sold these black women white dreams. It's not (laughs) good. Okay, ladies, now let's get information. I just want the record to say I love my black kings. (laughs) I'm open to all kings. kings. You you got one king. (laughs) I'm trying to have multiple kings. I I think that you know, generally, women know. If you have a very jealous boyfriend or partner, if you can't dance at the party oh. regular, if you got to look over your shoulder, if a man says, hey, how are you doing today? There are to- there are telltale signs early on that and this is not even specifically with marijuana, but it's specifically with ownership over your body and you as a human being, as a whole full person. If he thinks that you as a woman has have certain boxes you have to fit in in order to be dis- worthy to be loved to be kept by him there's probably he might push your ass down the stairs if you tell him you're gonna keep smoking weed and you should probably not be pregnant by him <laughs> he's gonna push you down the stairs right, right? and i'm saying this because my baby daddy early he did he was smoking weed too and and i kind of like was like this is what we're doing we're having a home birth i didn't do that i wish but like i was like kind of he was just happy to be pregnant with me you know but uh he was an asshole and he didn't he did feel like he had agency over my body and i knew that before it didn't show up in that way but i know the signs because i know that like you know these are things that if generally women we know we have ignore the flies yeah and it's about like do you do you feel like cared about (laughs) do you feel like your opinion actually matters and he's here to listen to it and like he's like let me hear what you have to say and let me like how much pain are you in like these are genuine like he's talking to you like a friend and not like maybe you're an object that Mm. part talking to you like a friend out with you as opposed to just put something on On you you. like let's work it out because you're his friend you're supposed to be like your partner whoever that is you guys are supposed to be best friends and you should care about your friend's well being so if you're friend is coming to me saying like look like I'm really not feeling well I'm really feeling like terrible and this right here is the only thing that's helping me your friend should be like I want you to be well I want you to be okay so baby let me go roll something up for you or like let's talk about this like let's figure out our compromise but like that's love like it, either you love me and you really do care about me like a friend or you just want me as a prop or you just don't pet. you haven't you haven't mastered healthy relationships yet and either way like that's not for me to figure out but you should figure it out before you let them get you pregnant introducing it having those conversations. is not gonna help yeah have mm-hmm. those conversations first um <laughs> um so how do you guys handle like <laughs> smoking weed with like significant others like especially like dating erica like <clears throat> how do you handle like you got you and orlando smoke weed together mm-hmm. you and justin smoke weed together mm-hmm. okay i smoke weed with jared like what is it a deal breaker to be with somebody who doesn't smoke weed because now, here we are all stoners and have been with people or with people who smoke weed mm-hmm. Is it a deal breaker if they don't smoke weed? No. No? Mm-mm. It's okay? As long as, they're suppo- as long as they're not looking at me like I'm crazy. For- yeah. Yeah, because my last yeah. relationship, I smoked my previous, my ex, he um, 
didn't smoke weed. Oh. And I, I, didn't, I just realized he never smoked weed. Mm-mm. He didn't. We smoke. smoked weed one time, maybe twice ever together. Wow. And I didn't care. You I mean, he smoke. and he didn't ever make me feel bad about it. He like never said he never anything. said shit. Like when I like. I needed to smoke a blunt or I needed to like, whatever. It was interrupting something. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't a thing. I never like resisted that. But I have been in relationships with people that have, or like not even, we never got into that phase because we wouldn't be in a relationship, but like dated people that have made comments that don't sweet smoke. Oh, you're going to smoke again? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah those yeah. comments that said again. <laughs> Again, yeah, yeah. And again after that, yeah. and then every meal. Surely after that comment, <laughs> that was the, probably the last time we did anything. Exactly. It, yeah. So, yeah, it needs to just mind your business, and this can flow great. <laughs> mind your business. Mind your business. <laughs> yeah. I like to smoke with my significant other. Yeah. I I think it's a nice like ritual. Um, I don't know if it's mandatory, but I like it. Like at the end of the night, and I like yeah, I think it's. Does it help you guys connect and like yeah, get I'd definitely closer, like, have better, deeper conversations? Yeah, it's like he rolls all my blunts. So it's like a devotion. Love language. It's a love language. It's a devotion. And he's done it ever since like we got se- we, we seriously started dating. And so like if I want to smoke, he's always rolling for me. Oh my gosh, that is so sexy. Yeah, I was like, it's really like a form of devotion. And then at the end of the night, we'll smoke together. We put the kid to sleep and we'll like rub each other's feet like a 69 and we'll pass it. Mm-hmm. And then we go to sleep, you know, so it's oh it's God. nice. But or before dinner so I, I i would prefer it i also would probably wouldn't like i i like to drink and i like to I, I would probably not date someone completely sober yeah yeah because i'm probably gonna get your nerves <laughs> <laughs> like because you were again <laughs> <laughs> yes again it's saturday right? <laughs> yeah like i would say i prefer it too it's, yeah it's nice it is a beautiful ritual to share it's nice yeah. especially like i feel like i always say couples that smoke weed together stay together because that's not true well <laughs> That's a fucking lie, okay? You better stop. Like <laughs> Don't be lying to these bitches. He wrote me a blunt. It was devotion. <laughs> <laughs> he loved me. Uh-uh. If he don't roll me, he don't love you, girl. <laughs> he don't love Yo, me. I used to know this girl. I used to, I used to know this black guy who dated this white girl in some New Jersey. And I think it was a control thing. He wouldn't let her touch the blunt. The fuck? So what? we would be uh, passing uh, the blunt. That is weird. My nigga, we'd be passing the blunt. What is blunt. he like this? What yeah. the fuck? What? Oh, Shut up. No, he's not. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Wait, no. if she did it? I can't. <laughs> or the, the fact that she can fix her <laughs> lips to go to fucking capture this blunt in her mouth. <laughs> they were, she was kind of slow. They were both kind of slow. This but is crazy. It was like. You guys want to yeah, wow, hit the cutie the pipe? That is actually ridiculous. Is, so your mouth is on that part. Yeah. And then oh you got to put your finger on that part right there. Oh, that's so cute. It looks like it's little right stairs. Right all your stuff is cute. I want to like hit them all. Yeah, you can cute. hit them all. Oh my god, is that a cloud oh, pipe? Yeah. I didn't see that. Oh, I want I that one. Actually, I did it here. There that's was a so crafting cute. business. Oh, that's busy. I really like gotta step my smoking. That's I gotta cool. step my smoking accessory. Me game too. Up. I like yes. some this, of your right? favorite like smoking cute? accessory companies. That one that you have in your hand is Laundry Day. It's a woman-owned cannabis brand that you guys would. You can hold that. You guys. My mouth is going here. No, um, your mouth is gonna go on the end right there. And your finger goes on that one. Uh, yep, and you light it. Well, I feel like I need to like laundry. Isn't that so pretty? <laughs> so that one's called. Um, mm. It's from the brand called Go Easy. The cloud is called Cloud Nine. Can I see that lighter? Use this. Let reach. But um. Yeah, we have to like pause, like and let you guys smoke a little bit more. Um, <laughs> isn't it so cute? Oh, look at it! It's so cute. I love that cloud. I know. I want that cloud. I, I want, want this to cloud. get one. <laughs> <laughs> look at that! It's so cute. Look at y'all. Ooh, Come on, ladies. <laughs> I'm here for it. Wait, I want. I want. I want to try it. <coughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like we have to all be smoking. It feels, <coughs> it feels proper. Um, yeah. Ooh, these are pretty. They are pretty. Ooh. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> This is so freaking cute. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. <laughs> Wait, what what is it? The Helen of Wait, Farms. That's, hey, what, it was it from OG last night. Oh, hey, oh it's resin laundry infused. Laundry, laundry yeah. day. Laundry day. <laughs> and cloud, what, what is this one? Hmm? Um, that's a that's go called easy. Go Easy. The brand's called Go Easy. That's a big ass pipe though. It hits really good. It makes I big love clouds. that. Big that cloud. Cool. Really? Yeah. Ooh, that's cute. I love it's the big definitely cloud. like, it's so cute and dainty, but then like it hits. I have that little stair stepper in purple. The little yeah, it I have in a that bunch of colors. Like purple, it's so cute. It, it doesn't look like, so the best part about being a mom and a woman who smokes weed is that you have little pieces <laughs> like that that don't look like anything. And yeah, so people they're just don't, look like artwork. They so just look art, cute. Yeah. Like if you have a play date, do you ever feel weird if you have a play date and you have paraphernalia in your house? 
Um, so I actually put all my stuff away after every smoke regardless. And I'm going to buy, cause this other mom mentioned it to me and now I'm stealing the idea. She has a, um, a keypad lock on her door where she puts in like the mm-hmm. number and like, and I'm going to put that on my door. So like whenever I'm kids, or other kids are over or if I'm not here mm-hmm. and like there's a babysitter or my mom, or I don't really care who it is, but I'm not there. You're not going in my room. So I'm, I'm going to put that on my door That's a good idea. this mm-hmm. year. Um, but yeah, I always put everything away because I'm clumsy and I have a lot of big glass pieces. I have like those two that you guys are smoking from and like, I don't want to break them. (laughs) So I have to, I make a habit of putting my shit away all the time. So I never really, if you come to my house, you're not going to find weed laying around. (coughs) You're not going to find pieces laying around. I keep like like a bong, like maybe next to the sink that I'm going to wash, but generally it's all in our bedroom. But I don't, yeah, when people come over, I don't care. I know, isn't this it This is good? amazing. Cloud? You this like cloud it? is the shit. I, I'm so glad you guys love it. Oh my God, so it does have a lot of smoke in here. And it's it feels like I'm smoking a bong almost. But right? it's, yeah. Yeah. it's giving bong yeah. vibes. Yeah. It's giving bong. You guys know I love my bong. So I had love to bring that piece on my trip. Are you like, tra- do you travel with your bongs? Yeah, those, well, those Jeez, two yeah. I travel with. I left my bongs at home. And that's why I can never be away from my house too long. Because I miss my babies. I miss my bongs. <laughs> <laughs> not my children I mean I miss them too but I miss my I bongs miss and I can only take little stuff like imagine me going to TSA with like bongs and glass pipes yeah, but you yeah. already what? like to pack a lot too and you I already pack, pack a lot like, like that's, <laughs> those are my bags like, like you guys I'm, I'm the most when I travel so um, but I usually try to bring pipes like that with me especially that one that's my new fave because it does hit like a bomb I know that is a cool that's I like really that cute. one I like that little cloud cloud here you go. Thank you. I like this too. I like a long skinny. It makes me feel like old and very old. Long. I can't believe I wasn't. I was, see, I told you I could not smoke today. You're right. Today <laughs> was the, today. I woke. I well, last night. I was like, I'm going to take a week off smoking because 4:20. I yeah. went hard. Okay, I was high as hell. As you should. And and mm-hmm. I and I've just been getting pretty high lately. And I was like, I'm going to take like just a five day I'm break. Pack another bowl. Because sometimes yeah. I like to take breaks because it all it really it enhances my high when I come back to it. Definitely. Um, but then I came here and I was like, "How the fuck am I gonna go?" On I was blunt, like, "You can decline." Show. She was like, "I can't go on blunt, 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 blowing mom and not smoke." I was like, "What?" I was like, what? Oh, peer pressure. Peer pressure. I was trying to like be a supportive friend. Like, you don't have to do what all the girls are doing. You don't have to be like everyone else. You can be different. I know yourself. Actually, you guys still got a hit in here, so yeah. I'm gonna finish that. I'm gonna top that off. Um, I would say, um, I know you keep your stuff away. Do you guys lock your stuff up or like, do you leave anything out? Like, I mean, I, the kids know, like your, your girls are nine. So like, they know, don't touch it. Yeah. I, I, I smoke blunts. So I'm not, I don't have a lot of, I don't have any pipes actually. You don't Just, have any pipes? I have one glass pipe. I'd really need to invest more in my like. <laughs> My high school. You guys are good moms. People should be sending you stuff. Hello, this is good moms, Mila. <laughs> Fully the cute shit. Mm-hmm. Don't send me no bullshit. We'll just cut a clip of her saying, "This is the best That's bowl," and they will send I you want that. that. We'll pay for that. that clip. We will tag oh, you. Oh, really? Okay. Just actually, my boyfriend just send me the footage. I want that. Oh, I will. Yeah, all you do is cut that clip, and it's yours. It's yours now. Perfect. Perfect. I'll even buy it. I mean, yes, you could buy it, but they could also just send it to you. Cut this me. part out, though. <laughs> <laughs> Send <laughs> black can of smokers. <laughs> yeah. Bombs for free. I mean, I really want to advocate for that because I feel yeah. like a part of my the stigma for me is the black part. Like, I don't know if white stoner moms I mean I don't know where you live and shit but like because <coughs> my kid is around predominantly white spaces like when the girl like a mom came over I'm like she's like oh something can't like something CBD I was like oh okay I, I am a 420 mom you know like I, yeah. I'm a cannabis mom my brand is around cannabis and then I felt more comfortable because you know it's not a big secret but I do feel like there's a stigma like our, you know just like I don't know maybe it's just I'm just out here loud and proud I think, and I always have been, but I think that's just because once I got educated, <laughs> once I knew that we had an ECS, the endo, you know, endo system, yeah. I was like, oh, it's score, over. like okay, bitch, our body has cannabinoids, bitch. <laughs> yeah, it's like this was made for me, right. so it's made for me. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I was thinking about this today because my daughter's birthday is this weekend, and she's gonna have like parents from different schools there. And I was like, I was, I thought I was like, am I gonna? Because originally I was gonna, gonna be at the house. I was gonna have. I was trying to move her birthday to four twenty, and I was like, oh. if it's four twenty, 
<laughs> you have to be smoking. <laughs> and then I was like, well, either way, bitch, you're going to smoke. Mm-hmm. You smoked at every birthday party. But I did notice that it, it came to my mind as because I think maybe because she's getting older. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I mean, her, it's just a thought. It's like, do I do I want my daughter to have to defend me? Do I want to even mm. give people the reason her the reason to have to, you yeah. know? And then you think like too late. <laughs> well, too late, but also like there's, there's always it's yeah. I mean, I'd rather it be this than something else, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, what if, if this is your if, embarrassment, baby. Embarrass it up because we 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 live in large and in charge over here smoking yes. weed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes. I mean, like, I I get that. Like, I really get that because as you guys know, I live in Georgia now. And so I think about that more than I've ever thought about it in the entire nine years I've been a parent. I've never fucking thought about this shit. You guys mm. know I used to sell shirts that said moms who smoke weed are not bad moms. I have I it. Go, it's my, one of my favorite shirts. Yeah, we'll go pick my kids up from school wearing that while here in California. Now I'm in Georgia and I think to myself, oh, fuck, I cannot wear this shirt out here. I cannot go pick up my kids wearing this shirt. And not even thinking that someone will do anything, but it's like... A stigma, like a stamp you're putting on your kid. But I'm already like one of the few black parents and kids in this school you know we're new here we're from california so they're already having these assumptions right and so i'm like and and that's when i realized like a lot about my merch as well like totally now i'm high but we're gonna ramble um i realized that like a lot of people were not buying my merch because they were in states like georgia (laughs) and they were scared too they were scared too and it was nothing personal and now i get it and so i'm like i'm more conscious of that i think about that and yeah whenever the kids have kids over who are not my friends kids come over oh yeah shit's put up shit is like out of sight out of mind we got the diffusers going like (laughs) you know like what's up no aces up in here for this come have fun little baby yeah we got snacks you know like i'm not (laughs) i'm i i'm I'm, I'm thinking about those things a lot, especially because my daughter is getting older and like her <laughs> friends are older and these kids are talking, you know, like. Yeah, I th- I mean, for me, when I had this thought the other day, I was thinking like, well, anyway, there's gonna be a smoking section regardless. So people are gonna be smoking weed there. And mm-hmm. whether or not I'd rather, you know, I smoke weed now. Than for you to invite little Johnny to find over, over later. Yeah. Like, let's get the shit out the way now. So, you know, that you can make if you have a choice here. And, you know, <laughs> you know, I just I, yeah. I feel like. Um, overthinking it. You can overthink all the things, but yeah. at the end of the day, this shit is a fucking flower. <laughs> Period. Period. You're drinking. <laughs> <in unison>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're go inside of a party and drink and get drunk and get a little too wine drunk. Got to take an Uber home, but like <laughs> smoking a flower is this like villainous, thing. irresponsible, low vibrational thing when actually it's extremely high vibrational yeah. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, and also the white moms be smoking and they be smoking yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I smoked with some moms from school before how was that the whole thing was a little <laughs> not <laughs> my, yeah. I had a very strange experience too yeah it, the whole thing wasn't overall great but yeah. um, <laughs> oh no yeah was some racial things were said it was like Whoa. a super uber rich oh, house yeah. she's like a model he's like a super producer but she's half black but it was just like Oops, kind of typical. Well, the weed be letting you know. <laughs> Wait, so have you got the weed be letting you know? Yeah, okay. that's true. That's true. I'm like, oh, I bet you gotta go. I never talk. <laughs> I, I never hang out with them again. <laughs> have you guys seen that episode on Abbott Elementary where there's a there's a, a mom and she keeps coming in wearing shirts that say like slut like <laughs> boss slut bitch like and then so she's like I want to have a con- can I have a conversation you with you know this is still you know first grade and she's like this is my business and you have a problem because I'm changing the word slut oh yeah I remember that episode <laughs> and she was like actually I'm a six figure businesswoman and you can look it up my on my website and then she was like felt really upset and, and like. <laughs> Sat, like uh, pff, like she judged As her. She yeah. she, it was As ridiculous, she right? But then I'm like, oh my god, where are those moms? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it's me us. with the weed shirt on. Oh like we're going god. to pick up our kids' school with the weed shirt Always. and the weed, weed earrings something. and a weed like wallet Always. and tote bag and like I'm like, fuck it, I smoke weed. Like 
Who's gonna check? And me? I'm still picking up my kid. I'm still on the right here with you. Field trips. Mm-hmm. I filled out all the little paperwork. Yes. Okay. And my kids are like, cute and smart and right, kind, right. and you fucking love them because yeah. I'm raising them right. And I think that's all that matters at the end of the day. Mm-hmm, is that I feel like the kids of like Hannah moms are the happiest kids. They're so loved. Well, it's yeah. more so because they have happy moms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, I think that is really yeah, that's key. been proven. Like a kid's happiness, like how he is as an adult or she is an ad- as an adult and how she rates her happiness is in the health and happiness of the mother. Yeah. And if cannabis helps you feel happier, then you should. Do, that. do what you need to do exactly. whatever Absolutely. it is Educate whatever that is go, and, yes. go to that whatever makes you happy whatever it's whatever it is whatever it's cannabis whether it's if it's crack don't don't nature <laughs> don't, do that. don't go to that don't if go to crack, crack don't do crack that crack is whack always but yeah. like more like n- natural yeah. <laughs> The coca plant, which would I would that was probably a better option. That's an there option. you go, right? But okay. Um, Please crack. Do that. You want that good crack? Just just chew a coca stick and <laughs> you'll be fine. You get all the energy you need. Set an intention and hike up the mountain. <laughs> like the indigenous used to so yes. what would you guys like what advice would you guys give to women who are just starting their mothers of journeys and they you know it's a first time mom expecting or someone who just has like a couple of little mm. littles you know those little toddler those little toddler ones <laughs> those little small ones because we got the big ones now so like we can't go back to the tiny kids but I know so let's take a moment of silence <laughs> when our kids were babies <laughs> I, I was, just thinking not <laughs> long ago about how much uh, I like that time and I miss it I just because so it was much. I was stay at home momming and I had all these mommy groups and things to do like let's go to the sing along let's go to walk over to the library and they and couldn't the play say now like, yes go to the open <laughs> gym we're gonna do this with that and it was just like out amongst people have people to talk to I think maybe that's it you need people to talk to like yeah. you need other people other doing adults. what but yes, they were so other tiny and adorable doing. and like oh, so cute. yeah it's so what advice do you guys have to like because we can really get stuck on you're really thing. making me go to a dark place I'm right like, now like, I'm really quietly like so emotional. I have all the moments so that are gone well. that I'll never get back I'm like oh my god that's over for real it's over. Over. that's done like, you'll never oh, experience that again it, I really get stressed out over it you guys like I I was concerned like do I need medicine I'm getting like dark I'm going to dark places like <laughs> yeah She's not gonna be a baby anymore, and I spent enough time with her. Like I'm like I could go. I'm, I'm like, stressed. Yeah. Like I, I got my daughter a phone for her birthday this year, and I went back and forth about it a lot, and I finally fucking did it. And when she got it, she was just like locked in immediately, yeah. and just like this is the best gift ever. This is the best birthday ever. <laughs> this is the greatest week of my life. <laughs> like, she was so happy, but I'm like, oh my god, like my kid is geeking out over a phone right now. Like I remember when she was geeking out over fucking, you know, what's that Coco Melon kid or whatever. Like, and now she's like has a cell phone and has like things to do and people to talk to on the phone and like like what's happening no yeah what's no, happening no. like how did you get to here she's like, like can i call you back i'm like <laughs> what <laughs> no i'm actually uh kind of busy right now <laughs> <laughs> literally like i'm building a house on roadblocks um <laughs> I can share the screen or I can call you back. I mean, I feel like throughout time, there's always those things, though. Because think about when you were a kid, there was like the fucking Tamagotchi. I'm sure our parents yeah. were like, when the fur be the fucking Tamagotchi? Yeah. Even and like the Tamagotchi. Even like, even like, even like, even like yeah. the same all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, like, the, even like I don't the, know what you're talking about. What the hell is the Tamagotchi? <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> You elder <laughs> millennials. <laughs> See, I felt like I was too old for the Tamagotchi. That was how old I am. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Not the fucking Tamagotchi. <laughs> or the two way, bitch. I don't know. Oh my oh, yeah. gosh. Two pages. Oh, okay, but okay. what advice do you guys <laughs> have for? for <laughs> <laughs> what advice do you guys have for new moms, like first time moms, like fresh moms without the fresh mom face and. 
<laughs> they have all these dreams. Not the fresh mom thing. Because <laughs> you know you have that fresh, that starry eye, that like ending. Hope. Yeah, hope. <laughs> Just full You're like, I'm going to be sleep trained by 11 months and potty <laughs> trained by you two. You have the best I have and the And we're going to travel together. so much because we're going to fly for free. We're going everywhere. We're going to be pictures my little bestie. <laughs> And yep. you should, and you can, and you, you can. will. So if that's what you want, then focus on that. But yeah. also, I would say just buy our book, A Good Mom's Guide to Making Bad Choices, this because it really is that. It's the guide to everything you need to know <laughs> about motherhood on your own and taking care of yourself as a mother and all the shit they don't tell you. And um, just be yourself try to find out who you are before you start introducing people into the mix. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that part. <laughs> and yes. and as you discover who you are, yeah. listen mm-hmm. to your body cuz it's always going to tell you mm-hmm. what's what where you should where you need to navigate and that's with cannabis, that's with relationships, that's with jobs. That is you have got to stay true to that self or else you're going to mislead you and the baby. Mm-hmm. You got to be clear and the God's going to lead you. You just got to listen to yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't go against it. Don't listen to what you should do or what someone else thinks you should do because that Gosh. is never the answer. Yeah. Never. Yeah. That is a short way to help and assert yourself and make the choice that's right for you. Cuz that is I think having the power to, you know, just feeling powerful in yourself because then you you feel good making these choices and saying, nope, this is how I'm going to birth this baby. Nope, this is how this needs to be done. And let me tell you why. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I'll hear your choices. Okay, that's good. Let's consider it. But just knowing who you are and being strong and trusting yourself, I think you have to, yeah, you got to trust yourself. Yeah. Trust yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and also one last thing is take as many photos and videos as you can. Like there's never too many photos. And then I also print them out because like, where did that fucking phone go? Right. <laughs> what fucking iCloud? You know what? Well, yeah. I'm like, I really like, it brings me like, I'm sad. Like ask my baby daddy, like, yo, can you send me this? Like, of course not. Mm-hmm. It's just never going to see all of them. It's just impossible in the, in the time and place that we're in in life. Cause yeah, I'm like, look at my Instagram to look at your childhood. Like, mommy, where's that? Where are all my pictures at? <laughs> on, on Instagram. Instagram. Keep scrolling, baby. Keep scrolling, baby. It was Go 2014. Oh, yeah, you've gone too far. You've gone too far. You missed it. You missed it. What the fuck? Not that far. You definitely. I mean, and and also. Don't beat yourself up about the shit that you're inevitably going to fuck up. Like, because you're going to fuck up. You're going to have epic fails. You're going to make your kid cry. And then you're going to cry. And it's okay to apologize to even a baby. Because sometimes you be wrong. (laughs) And you got to admit it. The rules are fake. And words are very, your words are very powerful. Oh, they're spells. They are literally spells. So, Yeah. yeah. Even spells that you can work over your own children. So be careful what you say about your kids, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or what you say about yourself in front of your kids. Ooh. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Even more so. Especially raising daughters. Like, you have to... I'm all, I find myself more so careful about the way I talk about myself and, like, the way I, like, just do move differently. And it kind of exudes more confidence because I want her to see, like, this is what a confident woman looks like. And, you know, the women I bring around her are confident women. So she gets to look up to all these amazing women. And, like, that makes her feel powerful as a young girl. And that's, like, the energy I want her to see and not me saying, like, oh, my God, I look so fat in this. Even though I might be thinking it. I'm not going (laughs) to Stop thinking it. I know. I got to stop the thought. You got to interrupt the thought. I got to stop the thought. Mm -hmm. But I don't say it because, you know... Saying it out loud is you bring it, you're breathing life into it. So it's just like, shh. yeah. That's also when in arguments too with Bay, I'd be like, just shut the fuck up, Shanitria, <laughs> and turn around and walk away. <laughs> turn <laughs> <your> <laughs> cheek. Shut it's the calm. fuck up. Okay, you guys. <laughs> this has been a great conversation. Yeah. We could obviously chat forever, um, but I really have loved having you guys here and talking about all this mom shit. Yes. Like, at the Cannon Mom Roundtable, I feel like we all got sufficiently high. Yeah. Yes. That's so wonderful. <laughs> I really do. I'm so glad I didn't stop smoking weed today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you didn't either. It was yes. a proper sesh. Um, so what's next for everyone? Like, And how can folks reach you? Um, we have some retreats coming up yes. in 2025. We might have some uh, leftover in 2020 in August. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. When is this coming out? 
this will probably be out when is this april it'll be out next month okay so just go to our website goodmomsbadchoices.com <laughs> when's your retreat <clears throat> we have one august 1st to the 6th and 7th the 13th you're asking me we have to, we're going to costa rica in august okay <laughs> all right, come on check girl. out the good vibe retreat well, all of our retreats there they might come out in june so it'll be closer to the perfect and we have more in 2025 um yeah just go to goodmoms.choices.com follow us on instagram for the most up-to-date information for now but eventually just you might as well just join the newsletter because i'm really trying to get the fuck off of the internet mm, that's right. and that's where we really talk to people um uh you can find me on instagram at watch erica you can find mila at mila with an h underscore map m-a-p-p <laughs> wait you gotta you gotta give them your other instagram account oh uh, hoochie mom and dad yeah. hoochie mom and dad <laughs> That's my lover account where I put all my my gay I love couple that page. shit. <laughs> my gay couple shit. It's just so like cheesy. You guys gotta post more. Okay, well he's gonna be so I'm happy. Said, he's gonna be so happy you said that. He gets in my ass and I'm like, okay. Because it's I, always so good. It's so good, you guys. Yeah. Okay, well I'll post be, more. I'll be so happy to hear that. I'm gonna go home and get really couple couple in love on Instagram because you said so. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. What's next, Angie? Uh, so I'll be, you know, out here in these comedy streets. Um, you can follow me at Highly Angie. And yeah, go to HighlyCrafty.com. Check out the blog. Check out all the products. Um, yeah, you know, I'm going to be having more clothes on the website soon. More accessories coming. Um, you know, more pop-ups. Check out. And if, if you're in LA, you might see me doing a pop-up teaching people how to get crafty. Yes. Mm. All right, you guys. Well, this has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much for joining. Y'all tap into all of these ladies. You're going to love them, especially the hoochie mama. And daddy. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, like, get your life. I don't know if it's, is it private or is it public? No, it's public. We oh. started a podcast. I have a podcast with my lover. Wait, what? Can, please tell I, the people. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Love Like This. It's just like a slow rollout. There's like four or five episodes over there. So. What? It's just us talking about love and tantra and shit. This is like so crazy because when I met you, you were like so single and now you have a whole podcast with your man and this is happening so fast for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to also like brace myself. When's the get... wedding? Like the good mom's wedding? Good soon, mom. <laughs> soon, soon. I'm trying oh to get, God. yeah. Wow. Congratulations. I Thank love you. this. I'm so happy for you guys. Like congratulations on all your success. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming. Cool. Congratulations on everything that you have been doing. Like... It's really been amazing to just like connect with mamas and have these conversations. Yeah. And I hope that it brings value to somebody and helps some mom out there know that like, girl, you are not alone. You're not a bad mom no. for smoking weed. It is okay to smoke weed. We're smoking weed. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> We're smoking weed with you. Like my eyes are barely open. I know. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> I've officially smoked them out and I love that. I like you guys are really high and I love that because like I feel I feel good though, but I'm not really high. But I love getting my guests really high. And your eyes are so red. I'm here for it. I love this. You guys, mm -hmm. I got the good mom's high. Mm -hmm. And she's an OG. She's mm -hmm. like, I'm chilling. <laughs> um, Am I lightweight? When you're smoking a blood boy, mama, right. yeah. <laughs> Everybody's a lightweight here. Right. Anywho, let's wrap this because she made sure you're still talking and she's high. Um, but thank you guys so much for joining this episode of the Blood Boy Mama podcast. I'm like, what am I doing here? Are we hanging out or am I doing a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, bitch. This is your life, hanging Mom, out with your friends. Hanging out with my friends. Getting high. Podcast and getting high. I literally get high all day. It's so crazy. I can't believe this is my life. You guys, anything is possible. Dream it, work hard, and you'll fucking have it, just like Beyonce said in that song. Um, so <laughs> thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Hunt Boy Mama podcast. Um, if you need more preg pregnancy, breastfeeding, postpartum, sex and cannabis information, um, mushroom information, how to microdose, I offer workshops on all of those things at bluntblowingmama.com backslash workshops. I got you, boo. I got all the info you need. Um, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe and send this podcast to a friend and send that to a friend and, you know, make some people listen to it in the break room at work whatever but support your girl <laughs> thank you and <laughs> bye yes, bye 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 oh my god i got